Hi everyone, it's Uncle Scrubby Baby here once again interrupting your sleep schedule with a late night video and this is a big one because I'm going to be doing a full review of the brand new tier 10 Chinese rocket heavy tank. It is the BZ-72-1. This vehicle is released in the auction. So for the next 24 hours, eh, give or take, actually about probably more like 12 hours depending on what server you're playing on. This thing will be available for gold. There will be 12,500 available on the European server and 3,500 available on the North American server. So this thing is likely to go for a quite a high price tag. So I'm here to let you know whether this thing is going to be worth pretty much the astronomical amounts of gold that people will bid for it. So the BZ721 is a reward vehicle, meaning that you can use any of your Chinese heavy tank crew on this vehicle. However, the commander is the radio operator, which means that if you absolutely, utterly love the 113, you'll be disappointed to know that on the 113, it's the loader that's the radio operator. And so you'll either have to waste a crew skill to use that crew on this vehicle, as you're undoubtedly want to going to have situational awareness on your commander. Luckily, if you have the BZ-75 or the WZ-111-5A, which are the tech tree heavy tanks now, you will be able to put those commanders on this tank, no problem. So before we get stuck into multiple helpings of gameplay today, let's see how the BZ-721 stacks up compared to its prime competition, the BZ-75, which is another tier 10 Chinese rocket heavy, and the Tech Tree WZ-111-5A, which is a pretty competitive tank. Right off the bat, the BZ-721 has a 130mm caliber gun, the same as the WZ-111-5A, but this one just hits harder, doing 560 damage compared to the 490. However, this pales in comparison compared to the 152mm that you'll get on the BZ-75, which hits for a whopping 650 alpha damage, meaning that this BZ-721 is kind of the halfway house, uh, halfway house between between the BZ-75 and the WZ-111-5A. Obviously, you're going to miss having that whopping uh, caliber gun on the BZ-75 with the AP shells able to overmatch so many awesome plates like the, the roof of the turret of the Super Conqueror or the 60TP, for example. Now, the damage per minute on this vehicle is not too much higher than the BZ-75, which is disappointing because you've lost alpha damage, and it's massively worse than the WZ-111-5A, which is packing like 400 extra damage per minute than this tank. With regards to the ammunition that this vehicle has, it has AP with 260 pen, heat with 320 pen, and HE with 65 millimeters of pen. So that makes this worse, much worse with regards to HE than the 152 that you'll be used to on the BZ-75. And we can, when we compare it to the awesome heat rounds on the WZ-111 fiber, which have 340 pen, yeah, you'll be disappointed. This kind of difference, the same uh, between the pre-nerf of the Object 279E and the post-nerf of the 279E. And it can quite often be the difference between reliable penetrating a mouse for example or not so the bz 721 definitely not a gold noob tank uh, a bit like the bz 75 within that regard with only one millimeter of difference another thing that's annoying about these shells is the shell velocity is not epic like on the bz 75 with 1150 which makes that thing fairly proficient at sniping gun handling wise it's kind of up and down for this vehicle 2.5 seconds aim time the same as the 5a 0.4 accuracy a little bit better than the bz 75 but remember you've lost all that alpha a little bit worse than the, the 5 a. The gun handling on this tank is much better on the turret than the BZ-75, meaning there's a possibility of arguing to drop vert stabs on this tank, but it is 10% worse with regards to its gun handling than the 5A, which is definitely a tank that I would want to focus my equipment and crew skills in other areas. The gun depression on this tank is 8 degrees, identical to the BZ-75, which makes it pretty flexible on a ridgeline. Now let's talk about the speed of the BZ-721. Now a little bit of history about this tank. Originally Wargaming were testing it with a 40 km an hour top speed limit, and that would make it mm, the fastest, one of the fastest heavies in the game. Because remember, this thing has rockets, and when you use the rockets, then the speed limit of the tank is going to massively change. The speed limit of the vehicle when you're using the rockets increases by 50%. Now remember, this scales with field mods, and it also scales with uh, equipment. So if you were to put a decent turbo on this vehicle, like a bounty turbo, that means you can go at 58.5 from up from the 30 kilometers an hour that this tank has. So imagine what this tank would have been able to do if it was able to go at 40 kilometers an hour. It would have been absolutely insane. So Wargaming have pretty much made this the same kind of speed as the BZ-75. Well, at least you'd think that if you also don't take into account that this tank gets different field mods to the BZ-75. The BZ-75 field mod increases the top speed limit of the tank by two kilometers an hour 
uh, meaning that you got 32 compared to the BZ-72 one, which actually gets four kilometers an hour forwards, which makes it two kilometers an hour base faster forwards, which will make it three kilometers an hour faster forwards when you are using the rockets on this tank, because the field mod also scales with the rockets for that plus 50%. Accordingly, that makes this tank just a little bit faster than its BZ-75 competition. And if you are the kind of person who wants to put only the best kind of equipment on this tank, then you could go at 60 kilometers an hour with a Bond Turbo and the Field Mod. It should also be mentioned that the power to weight ratio on this vehicle with rockets is 47.72, meaning that you can go up slope at that 60 kilometers an hour, truly making this a ridiculously fast heavy with regards to its mobility. The power to weight on this tank is much better than the B775. It makes that feel sluggish within that regard. And when you are using rockets on the BZ-75, it is going to do pretty well along the flat, pretty much comparable to this tank. But up slope, I found my BZ-72-1 could access areas of the map that other tanks could only dream of. Even faster medium tanks can't compete with a rocket boosting BZ-72-1. Combine this with awesome ground resistances on this tank, and it means that it doesn't have to suffer on soft terrain like the 5A or the BZ-75. This truly feels more like a medium tank than a heavy tank within that regard, which is good because as we're gonna see with the armor, this thing is more of a medium than a heavy. The hull armor at the front is 155, awful compared to the 200 on the BZ-75. The side armor is 70, awful compared to the 110 and the 120 on the 5A. The front of the turret, however, is looks really nice. 350, wow, that's amazing. Better than even the impressive 330 on the BZ-75 and makes the 5A look awful with its 300 millimeters of pen. However, when we take a look at how this armor actually works, sure, you've got the most epic turret of epic turrets, even against 320 heat. They are not going to be doing anything, but uh, what's that? Yes, big weak points with only 150 millimeters of effective armor. Even when you're using the gun depression on this tank, the weak point on the left is very prominent, easily hit, and that means that you kind of have to go backwards and forwards to uh, have to avoid the shells from your opponents. The, the rest of the armor is hit and miss, really. The upper plate is pretty good against standard rounds, but as soon as they load gold, it really fails. And if you're not using any of your gun depression, that upper hull armor becomes quite poor. If you are using your upper, if you are using your gun depression, if you can avoid getting shot in the lower plate, it's pretty darn good. But annoyingly, there's this kind of rounded edge to the hull which goes over the tracks. And this only has 20 millimeters of armor, meaning that if you are using your gun depression, your opponents can shoot up into this side area probably tracking you and all 61 millimeter caliber guns and larger of which they're all all guns uh, are going to overmatch and always go in also the lower hull of this vehicle is only 20 millimeters at the back and 30 at the front meaning that you can get overmatched by pretty much all guns you're going to meet and artillery does do massive damage to this tank with some horrendous armor on top and quite a long turret that sticks out round corners especially at the back with only 50 millimeters of protection look at that you can pen that from this angle and if you're firing heat where well, you can pen that even from this angle at the back it is very awkward uh if you're side scraping in this tank again it, it it's pretty good against most situations and it is one of the better aspects of the tank until your opponents start to load heat and when they do then the cheeks become a little bit poor and the inside does have some issues and really, they're just going to aim at those those cupolas. So it's really a bad news for the BZ-72-1 within that regard. Combine this with poor hit points at 2,200, which is 10% less than the BZ-75. And this thing really just doesn't feel like it has the durability to be able to deal with its opponents. However, one advantage that this tank does have is that it has 400 meters view range, which is better than the BZ-75. So all in all... Pretty okay armor, but not great durability, not perfect. I'd say it's probably comparable uh, to the WZ-111 5A. It's got pretty darn good mobility as long as you are using the rockets on this tank. I'd say all in all, worse effectively than the WZ-111 5A, but better for rushing into the initial position until your rockets run out. Gun handling's worse than the 5A. I'd say the firepower is much worse than the 5A. Apart from those rockets, this thing is looking significantly worse than the 5A. There's another thing that I'd like to highlight with this tank, and that is, I'm not sure if this is an oversight, but with the Chinese rocket heavies in World of Tanks, all of the tier sevens have three charges, all of the tier 8s have four charges, all of the tier 9s, well the one tier 9 has five charges, and the tier 10 had six charges. However, for some reason, 
Wargaming have made it so that the BZ-72-1, unlike the BZ-75, gets one less use of the rockets, which can actually be really frustrating, because quite often with this tank, I want to burn three or four to get into position, and I'll only be left with one. Whereas with the BZ-75, I'll burn three or four to get into position, and I'll have uh, two or three left for later on in the battle. So I'm not sure why Wargaming decided to do this, and I would really like for the developers to clarify whether it was an oversight or if it was a balancing decision on this tank. Crew-wise, this vehicle is super simple. You want to focus on Brothers in Arms, Recon, Situational Awareness and Repairs on this tank, and all of the others are extra. If you want to get Eagle Eye, Firefighting, Concealment on your commander, that can be nice. For the gunner, again, Brothers in Arms repairs to start with. Then you want to slap on things like snapshot, possibly concealment designated target. And if you're not using a fire extinguisher, well, fire extinguishing is quite nice. For your driver, I would thoroughly recommend to take Brothers in Arms repairs and then take controlled impact on this tank. And that is because the vehicle does weigh nearly 60 tons. Sorry, let me correct that 54 tons when it is fully equipped. And so that can do some serious damage when you're plowing into vehicles with rockets at 60 kilometers an hour. And for the loader, super simple, only a loader roll, not even the radio operator on this tank. Brothers in arms, repairs, get yourself safe storage because this thing loves to get amaracked and then intuition probably to switch out between the AP and the heat rounds on this tank. Equipment wise, I like two builds on this tank. It doesn't really have very high damage per minute, so I'm not going to be focusing on that for the larger maps where I feel that I'd rather have the durability device so I don't get tracked while I'm rushing into position and the turbo to allow me to be able to get there. I'm going to be putting vents on this thing as well. However, you could exchange the turbo for an experimental turbo on this tank, which will do very well, especially if you can get the experimental turbo up to level three, where it's going to give you five kilometers an hour Forwards. Now remember that's not going to be quite as good forwards as the Bond Turbo, but that will allow you to drop vert stabs on this tank, which will make it uh, very flexible with its gun handling as well and give you more room for other aspects. On one of my builds, I'm going to be dropping the turbo to focus on the gun rammer, and that's for the close quarters combat maps, or maps where I feel that I don't really need the turbo to rush into position because the vehicle is going to be fast enough driving along at about 50. With regards to the field mods on this tank, firstly I'd like to take all-terrain suspension to be able to improve the uh, the crossing speed of this tank however it does have really good ground resistances so this might be a case of not taking one or even going the other way if you're so inclined and you want to keep your track super healthy next i'm going to be improving the accuracy of the vehicle i'm going to be following it up by taking the view range then this is the most important field mod to take on this tank the four kilometers an hour faster forwards revolutionizes this tank not only is it going to make your base speed 34 kilometers an hour it's going to mean that you gain six kilometers an hour when you are using the rockets because the field mods the entire speed of the tank gets boosted and not just the base speed of the tank and for the final field mod this one's going to be down to you whether you want to improve the hit points of the vehicle or whether you want to improve the relatively poor dispersion when you're moving and turning the hull of that point too. I personally am going to take the lightweight platform and drop the vert stabs to invest into other aspects of this tank. Anyway, I think that's quite enough jibber jabber. Let's get stuck into some gameplay. Okay, so firstly, we are going to be rolling out on Oyster Bay. This is the perfect opportunity to show that this vehicle is not the kind of tank that, at least in my opinion, wants to go and sit in a heavy alleyway and not flow around the map. Look at this thing plowing forwards. I'm only using standard equipment here. I know I've got all the crew skills, but I really can't be bothered to go and give myself RSI clicking uh, 20 times to go and get only four or five crew skills. And honestly, after you've got four or five, you're pretty much 95, 99% as good as you are going to be with all of the, the random ass ones that you're going to have on top of that. So standard equipment here should be achievable by everyone irrelevant of whether you've got a Watt Plus account. Although I do expect that people will probably want to put fancy equipment on this tank because it's going to probably cost you an arm and a leg. I should imagine this thing is going to go for at least 20,000 gold, if not 30,000 gold. So just, just to clarify for everyone who is thinking like you want to bid on this tank, remember that I believe that Wargaming is showing the competitive bid price. What I'd recommend is later on, probably about half an hour, an hour, whatever you want to do before the auction ends, go and take a look to see what the competitive bid is and don't bid too much more than that. Otherwise, you uh, you are going to end up just wasting a lot of gold. Uh, look at this thing. I'm just bullying this 121B. I'm trying to sacrifice him to my team here, hoping that my team is just going to, uh, to finish them off. Uh, uh, unfortunately, they don't. And I take a shot from the, uh, the object 261 for my trouble. Nevertheless, kind of fun to just play such a fast heavy. It is one of the fastest heavies in the game. 
It's not quite as fast as an IS-7 if you manage to not slow down in that vehicle or a 260. As you can see here, like limited to like 36, 38, driving along, not too fast at all. I should be able to go a little bit faster, more like 40 when I think I'm taking into the, the turbo into count. Or 39 if we're being exact here with a 30 base speed, 4 from the field mod, and then 5 from the turbo as I've been able to put it in a slot. However, when you are using those rockets, this thing, you know, getting that extra 20 kilometers an hour is just pretty wild. And it does allow you to make a gigantic map like this small. That's one of the advantages. I don't know what's going on here. Is this Batchak giving up or is he just trying to shoot people in the valley? I don't think he was giving up. I think he was trying to shoot people in the valley. Unlike the Object 704 who just gave up about the, the BZ-72-1. It, it's really weird when you think about how fast heavy tanks are in 2024 compared to what they used to be. This is meant to be the role of the medium tank. This is definitely going to be more of a medium heavy. And I think this is really a medium in a heavy tank's clothing. And the only real disadvantage is that you aren't going to have the extra camera rating on the move. So that is a significant downside to this tank. Something like an Object 140 can go pretty much as fast as this thing can with its rockets the whole time. With a 55, and if you were to put a turbo on it, it would literally be like this the, the whole time, apart from when you're going up significant amounts of slope. I give the EBR a thumbs up there as they did help me to be able to uh, isolate that 261. And again, we're going to use our final rocket charge. Again, I want to highlight that it is really frustrating in this tank, and I do notice only having five rocket charges compared to six. Now, if I needed to have that extra bit of speed boost, or maybe I wanted to ram something, or just get out of harm's way, as you can do with the rockets on this tank, which is what makes them special in the first place, I can't do that. Whereas if I was on the BZ-75, I could. So I don't know why Wargaming decided to do that. Maybe they thought that this vehicle was just going to be too fast because of the extra two kilometers an hour they gave it with the field mod. But really, this tank, it needs those extra two kilometers an hour. Otherwise, it's pretty much just a worse BZ-75 to all intents and purposes. Why wouldn't you want to have 650 Alpha? Why wouldn't you have better shell velocity on the armor-piercing rounds? Why wouldn't you want to have the more special high-explosive rounds? Why wouldn't you want to have the more idiot-proof armor with the uh, better lower plate than you have on this tank? It does feel fairly awkward within that regard. This tank not holding up compared to the BZ-75. So I do think that Wargaming should have given it six boosts because that's really one of the only strong points of this tank. Luckily, even with bad damage per minute and no gun rammer, as long as we just use our mobility to try and put ourselves in an awkward position, it's still hard for our opponents to deal with us. But still, like, we're, we're five, four and a half minutes into the game, we haven't blocked a single shot in a heavy tank. And trust me, if you decide to get this tank, there's going to be a lot of that. There's going to be a lot of times where this thing's armor just doesn't work, because you've got these huge weak points on top of the tank that people want to deal with. You've got an awful lower plate, which is very prominent, and it sticks quite far up. While the vehicle is fairly low profile, the lower plate does stick high, and that does make that upper plate a little bit better, but as I showed you, even against heat rounds, it's not that special. We're just using our low profile nature to give this moisten a little bit of a side hug, and it looks like they maybe tried to give up and go after the uh, Type 68 that's behind me, but it wasn't to be. I'm trying to sneak around this Tiger Mouse, and I realize good luck trying to push like a 100, 120 ton tank out the way. So I'll just settle for getting a shot in, lock down the tracks of the T-123, go try and go forward so I'm not blocking my Type 68 because he deserves the kill. He's helped me out with the, the scenarios. And there we go. Wham, bam. Thank you, bam. That is 7,600 combined in a five and a half minute ruffle stomp. That is really the BZ-721 in its element. To all intents and purposes, it is a medium tank that has higher alpha damage, but it does have to make so many sacrifices with regards to the gun handling and the mobility outside of that initial rocket boost to be able to achieve that extra alpha. So nice ace tanker here for the BZ-721, but let's be honest, nobody's really playing it. What does it matter for the high caliber? Yeah, 5,889 damage for those five kills. Decent, solid game. It was actually more like 7,800 combined. And as we didn't spam any gold, even resupplying our premium consumable full cost, we still break even. This isn't a premium tank. It isn't going to make you extra credits, but remember, it will make you extra crew training. All right, so now we're rolling out on mines. And again, we're going to be taking the turbo build here dropping the gun rammer because it's all about getting up on the hill so i'm going to be using durability device to make sure i'm not going to get tracked going up on the hills that would be a disaster and i feel like this kind of tank with its low damage per minute and relatively high alpha damage i'd rather have the vents and the gun rammer but again when we play on close quarters combat maps i take the gun rammer 
to make sure that I have the firepower to be able to handle those trading engagements. But the 560 alpha damage on this vehicle, it just, for me, plays a lot different to the 490 that you'll have on the 58. When I'm playing a 5A, I will take a gun rammer every day of the week. The whole point of the 5A is its firepower, which is why I want to improve it on that vehicle. I go as far on the 5A to sometimes take vert stabs with a gun rammer and vents and just drop the durability altogether and then play it as if uh, a really aggressive, brawling heavy. Because uh, with the 7 degrees of gun depression, you want to try and work your ridges, but not. it's not like this vehicle with its 8 degrees. And arguably, it's better turret when it's doing so. Although, man, that lower plate really does stick out. One thing that is definitely nice on this vehicle is it seems to be this kind of like halfway house. 560 Alpha is better than on the 730, which I believe has 530, for example. 780, sorry, not the 730, the 780. Uh, the tier 10 Soviet trading, not trading caravan, what's it called? Assembly shop tank. And really, the, the tanks do play quite similar. This gun isn't nearly as reliable, though. The accuracy, as you can see, quite poor. We're just looking for a shot there on the Type 71, that new Tier 10 Japanese heavy tank this thing has to contend with. Should already be firing heat at the side of that vehicle. I could probably be able to uh, go through more plates. Funny enough, the weak point of the Type 71 is just right in the middle on the front of the hull. Wargaming a bit of a, a troll, really, within that regard. I'm thinking, should I blind fire here? The BZ-71, sorry, the Type 71, can he really be hidden? I don't need to, but oh no, that poor accuracy rearing its ugly head. I hate this 0.4 accuracy on this tank. It really does do badly at mid-ranges. And this, remember, is with the vents. That's improving the accuracy on the vehicle by about 2.5% outside of a bonus slot. If you were to go and put, like, your bounty vents on this thing, you'd be probably getting more like 3% accuracy or 3.2% 3 and 3 accuracy improvement, which can make a big difference. It's the equivalent of a free field mod within that regard. Uh, and, yeah, I just don't really think that this tank is an all-in vehicle in every scenario. I'm playing a map like Runeberg or Himmelsdorf. Unfortunately, you do have to go for all-in situations. But on mines, good luck. Good luck taking the hill without a turbo. Mandatory on this vehicle for at least one of your builds. Even if you do elect to, say, not take the vents and you want to take a turbo instead, which is perfectly understandable. A lot of people would play this tank with durability, uh, experimental turbo, and a gun rammer, for example. And I think that that kind of build could be very nice. Whether you want to put vertical stabilizers on this tank, what are you going to drop to be able to put vert stabs? The durability device? Oh, I, I guess, considering this vehicle doesn't have the best of hit points, there could be an argument to drop the durability device. But personally, for me, after three marking the BZ-75 and realizing just how awesome the durability device feels on that tank, because otherwise you lose your fuel tanks, you lose your ammo rank, you lose your engine. And you don't want to have to waste your repair kit on your tracks. Or maybe you have to use your repair kit on your uh, your ammo rack or your fuel tanks or your engine. And then the next time you get tracked, if you don't have the durability device, it can take you so long to be able to repair the track that you get farmed. And there's nothing more frustrating in World of Tanks than getting farmed. So to be successful in the BZ-72-1, you are going to have to know the best positions to push at the start of the battle. It'll be very good in the hands of a capable player who knows all of the maps and all of the starting positions like the back of their hand. Because it's one of the fastest heavy tanks in the game. And arguably the fastest into some positions upslope with a new maximum top speed with the best equipment of 60 kilometers an hour with that ridiculous 40 odd power to weight ratio like 45 power to weight ratio that's more like a t100 lt this thing will most likely actually beat a t100 lt upper slope at least some of the steeper slopes in the game but obviously held back by that top speed limit even with the rockets but definitely not the power to weight ratio holding this thing so the bz 721 how do i feel about this tank do I think that it's going to be worth the astronomical amount of gold? Oh, there you go. If I was playing the 5A, I would have penned that. That is a difference between the 320 gold and the 340 gold. And it's definitely one of the more annoying aspects of this vehicle is just how poor the firepower is. Really, all of my experience in this tank with the about 20 or so games, I played this one a lot. I actually played this one way more than I usually would do uh, for this review. Because initially... 
I thought that it was really, really good because I was getting maps like mines and I was just rushing into position and doing very well. However, in the, the next map of the next game, you're going to see the realities of the BZ-72-1. And for every map that you get on, like Oyster Bay or Mines, where you really have an opportunity to let rip and make a flanking play and just harass your opponents, you will struggle in other areas. It is quite nice, though, to have literally 120 more alpha damage than the Object 279E. And while that tank has more armor and more hit points than me, I'm perfectly happy to do 560 damage to the 279E to receive 440 in return. I'm going to be winning those trades all day long. So happy I didn't overpoke into that bush. Otherwise, that gorilla was going to shut me down. So we're in a bit of an awkward situation here. We're even on tanks, but we're actually down by nearly 2,000 hit points. It's one of those kind of games which is slow and drawn out. And in this kind of a situation for the vehicle, I just wish I was playing something that had better firepower. It can be quite frustrating to play this tank because, you know, you've got the rockets to boost up on top of the hill. Uh, I don't know what that rocket was. I think that rocket was just pure greed. I was thinking about going after the T-124 and then I realized, oh, the 279E is coming around the corner. So maybe I can help out the Centurion instead. So I'm just mousing over to see if they're aiming at me. Luckily, they're not. And this is this is a feels-good moment. The Centurion shuts down the Udez. I, I give a thumbs up to the Centurion, asking for the Centurion to hit the Jaegeru in the side. He does, and I'm going to hopefully wait till the 279E has to force their attention towards the 780 or the Centurion, and I'll be able to harass them. Asking for the Centurion to proxy spot here, as soon as the 279E turns away, and boom, there we go. Great kill, putting three shots in, doing over 1,500 damage to the Object 279E. That is 60% of his hit points. And this vehicle, with its nice mobility, if it can control an engagement like that, it can do work. And 320 heat, while it's not as good as 340 like the 279E previously had, ah, it's workable. It's workable. It's not like a Udez, which I think has 310. And it's definitely not like a TVP, which has 300. But it's still definitely low pen. Now, the heat can be advantageous for when you need to penetrate angles that are higher than 70 degrees compared to your armor piercing rounds. But low pen heat is worse than decent pen APCR when you're shooting at surfaces which are angled at 70 degrees and less. If I'm shooting at, for example, uh, the Hori 3, the, the structure on the Hori 3, when it's using its 7 degrees of gun depression, the heat rounds won't normalize at all. Whereas if I was firing AP rounds with decent pen, I'd get 5 degrees of normalization. Or if I was firing APCR rounds, I'd get 2 degrees of normalization, which reduced that 7 degrees angle on the Hori down to 5 degrees, which would mean that I would probably have a better chance with a tank like a Super Conqueror, which has a comparable amount of penetration on APCR. I'd definitely have a better chance than the 320 that you get with heat. So while the heat is a nice round to have, and I'd probably prefer to have 320 than to have an APCR round, just for flexibility's sake, it can still be incredibly awkward for just bludgeoning through reasonably angled armor when you're not just shooting at completely flat surfaces. All right, juicy shot onto the back of the TVP. We've loaded AP so we can be able to overmatch the sides of that vehicle. And yeah, this 130 millimeter caliber gun, you will be overmatching all 40 millimeter plates. And there are a lot of 40 millimeter plates in the game, like on the side of a T100, for example. If you're playing in a tank like a T-125. Oh, nice. The rocket's there to be able to avoid taking more than uh, one shot from the TVP. He misses another shell into the fence. And I'm perfectly happy to tank the sh extra shell there to be able to put 560 on average into them. Unfortunately, we low rolled and the 60 TP on my team actually ends up getting themselves destroyed. I'm hoping that the 780 is going to help me out here. This game is still pretty close. It's even on hit points and we're only up by a tank and luckily the artillery misses me. But a clutch shot there into the back of the TVP. And now it's a case of just baiting him and this is where the mobility on this thing is phenomenal if i'm playing a different heavy tank i'm slow he can catch me but i am not a slow heavy tank which means that the tvp's not able to catch me when they reload and we can shut them down and luckily because we're on mines a small map we didn't have to burn four boosts to be able to get into position we only burned three and then we whiffed one on top of the hill which means that we've got an extra boost for now deciding to try and harass we look for the fe 405 don't manage to get them. We've got 560 out, so we easily should be able to roll on the uh, strv 103 b And now it's just a case of seeing if we can mop up the final artillery who managed to harass us earlier. So yeah, all in all, a decent round for the BZ-72-1. This was a close game. We had a great impact in this battle with our 6,500 combined and 
hoping that I can be able to add to it a little bit with the T92. But unfortunately, the 113 got the good shot in. Finishes him off. That's this tank in a nutshell. It's fast. Use it to rush into position. And if you don't use it to rush into position, just don't play this tank. Go play something else. So let's play one more game in the BZ-72-1. And on this map, I decided that I'm going to be using the gun rammer instead. Because honestly, it's this map, it's not so much about rushing into position as to actually having the firepower to brawl afterwards. So because this vehicle only has six, uh, five boosts rather than six, you actually want to be a little bit more tactical about when you want to use the boosts. And as you can see, I'm slowly going down the hill here. I'm not using any of my boosts. I'm going to save them for later on in the battle where possibly I might use them. And remember, going downhill, if you use rockets, the game actually hard caps your speed. You can't use rockets down slope and go ridiculously quickly. So instead, I'm going to save the rockets for where I'm going up slope. And look, even though I don't take a turbo, I've actually overtaken all those vehicles because they're all slow going up the slope. And I'm going to overtake the VZ-55, which you wouldn't say is a slow heavy. And I'm slowly but surely getting into position as quickly as the 277, who doesn't have any field mods and they don't have the durability device. So maybe they're taking gun rammer and turbo on that vehicle. We don't know. And I've still got the extra boost to be able to cross the gap, which is the danger zone of this vehicle. And there you go. Without the turbo on this map, we have managed to make it into position. And so once again, I'd like to clarify, this is just experience for rushing into positions. You will know whether you need the turbo to cross a gap really quickly, or you will know whether you can manage to get away without it and be able to invest into another aspect of the tank. And the amount of players out there who don't use two builds on their heavy tanks is too darn high. Really, what are you doing? I can understand if we're talking about kind of like a, a tier 7 or a tier 8 tank here. You can't be bothered to put two sets of equipment because it's expensive. But really, on a tank like this, if you're not using two sets of equipment and you're creating variety between your builds and using for the different map types, then frankly, you're trolling. It's not an excuse to say, I'm going to be lazy and only have one and just use that for all of the maps. Even if you don't use either of the two builds that I personally use or recommend, at least create your own and then go for that kind of vibe. I really think that on a, on a tank like this, it's very influential. And this on the BZ-75 as well, as to uh, what builds you choose to be able to take the positions for the different maps. If I could, uh, I would invest into an experimental turbo on this vehicle, like I did on the BZ-75. That was one of the biggest differences I made on the BZ-75, is I dropped the regular turbo and I used a tier 3 experimental turbo. And that's how I actually ended up having really good performance in my BZ-75 and ending up 3 marking the vehicle. But you'll have to wait for the uh, the masterclass of the BZ-75 before I start to... Uh, to feature those amazing games that I had in that tank in one of the best sessions I've ever had in, in my 100,000 games of playing. But I digress. Let's focus on its brother, the BZ-72-1. And this is where just the gun rammer is going to pay off. I don't really need the turbo in this scenario. Sure, it'd be nice to be a little bit faster forwards and a little bit faster backwards, but it's okay. We're just sitting on a ridge. Well, we're not sitting on a ridge line. We're sitting side scraping, just trying to bait people into shooting us here, hoping that this BZ-58-2 will fire into my side. Unfortunately, they do. And there goes my fuel tanks. I would recommend that you consider using a large repair kit on this vehicle because you do lose your ammo rack and your fuel tanks a lot, often getting tracked at the same time. And what you're going to see in this game is that I guess I could be a little bit more intelligent with how I'm going to use my armor here. But this tank, it, it's, it's, it's a bit awkward because you do have that high alpha and you do feel like I just need to get my shots in. And when the lower plate is as bad as it is on this vehicle, you're not avoiding the damage anyway. Luckily, we're showing some okay marksmanship against the, uh, the mouse here. Now up to 3,800 damage. I've still got 1,551 hit points left. It's a very close game here. My team are finally starting to surround and flank our opponents. I'm going to aim slightly high there above the tracks because I'm loading heat and not AP. If I was firing AP, I could have fired through the tracks there. The Hori is holding back the mouse. And all that I'm really doing is just waiting for the mouse to shoot. And now that I know that the mouse is shot, then I'm going to be able to go after them. And hopefully I'm going to hit the cheeks. But this was actually a little bit of a misplay by me. I should have been more aggressive against this mouse. And honestly, it was just poor play by me there. And I ended up losing 500 hit points for it. And there go my fuel tanks again. If I didn't repair my fuel tanks earlier, I would be on fire. And to all intents and purposes, dead or at least crippled inside this game. I did make a misplay there undoubtedly. I should have traded more aggressively against the mouse. 
Looks like the mouse has fired those who can come around the corner. And even the 420... Sorry, the 320 poor penetration on this vehicle is enough to be able to go through the cheeks of the mouse there. I was firing at a tiger mouse at that angle. I might not have been, though. Luckily, the mouse has fired once again. We finish him off. Up to 5,500 damage in here. And a frag. But I'm noticing at this stage that, gosh, our base is in a very awkward scenario. So we're going to have to clean up and then probably get back if we want to take this game. So I'm looking for the shot on the top of the 50 TP. And it is nice to have this 560 alpha within that regard. I bait the 50 TP into fluffing the shot against my tracks. And I'm going to have more than enough time to nonchalantly come around the corner. The tiger mouse finishes them off. I'm going to use one of my two remaining boosts to try and make a flanking play. And hopefully help out the G-Saw and the 30B who are harassing the enemy team. But oh dear, an IS-4 gets a great shot to begin with in against me. I'm going to fire at them here. And I just realize I have to get around the corner because there's nobody behind me. But I also want to try and angle my armor, see if I can last a little bit longer and uh, we get caught. Set on fire. So in this game, I really wanted to highlight a couple of things. Number one, this tank's armor just really doesn't feel very good. Also, its lack of firepower, unlike a 5A, means that you just can't farm your opponents quick enough to be able to cut your way through certain situations. Spoilers, look at the map situation. Nobody gets back to base. The enemy caps out. And another thing, that this thing takes a lot of field mod damage. Lots of fuel tanks, lots of ammo racks. So I would thoroughly recommend that you take that into consideration and you get yourself safe stowage. You probably get yourself preventative maintenance to protect your engine. Although the engine uh, fire chance on this tank is 12%, so it's not too bad. And whether or not you would want to use an experimental durability device on this vehicle to improve the horrible internal module durability that this tank has will be down to how many of those kind of aspects that you do have spare. So all in all, the BZ-72-1. Do I think this is the new best heavy tank in World of Tanks? No, not, not even close. I'd say all in all, this vehicle is probably worse than the BZ-75, as while that tank still has issues with the cupola and it's just a touch slower than this vehicle, the BZ-75 with that 650 alpha damage and just having its overmatch capabilities and better shell velocity on its armor piercing rounds just feels like a true aggressive fast juggernaut with those extra hit points whereas this thing feels a bit more like a medium tank when you add that to just really annoying features about the vehicle like only having five charges rather than six charges means that outside of contesting those early aggressive positions or the kind of maps where you want to go and assist your mediums and make a, a piercing play against your opponents I think this is actually quite a poor tank and I think it's probably going to be one of the, the worst of the tier 10 heavies in the hands of the average and the below average player. However, for you very good players out there who will set the vehicle up correctly and make use of its early game aggressive capacities to win the most important positions on the map, then this thing could end up being pretty okay. However, I would argue it doesn't really do anything too new to justify what is most likely going to be an astronomical price tag on this vehicle. So unless you have a huge amount of gold lying around that you've got nothing else to spend it on inside World of Tanks and you're a tank collector who absolutely loves fast aggressive heavies that blur the line between heavy and medium then I would thoroughly recommend skipping out on this tank. And also for all of you who have a lot of gold lying around just because you bought 200 loot boxes at Christmas doesn't mean you need to spend that gold now and I thoroughly recommend you check out a video that I published last month about how much it actually costs to play World of Tanks to get an idea of where you might be able to invest that gold better in either getting the premium features of the battle pass to get extra tokens for the upcoming year or alternatively converting free experience at a discount to invest into assembly shop tanks instead as i do expect this thing will go for at least 20 to 30 thousand gold with the amount that wargaming have released Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it. My full tank review of the BZ-72-1. Really hope this video was useful for you and allowed you to make an informed decision. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about this tank in the comments down below. Do you think it looks incredible? Do you think it looks okay? Do you think that Wargaming have missed out on an opportunity to make a fun novel tank? And are you going to get one? And how much are you going to spend? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.